Hey everyone, Michigan here with another replay for you. And this time we have an advanced game featuring Shadow Warrior 10. And I'm calling this advanced. I'm over there in the Chieftain, as you'll see. And I don't have the voice audio, but I think this is a great uh, call here that I do often. I hope you are in the clan so that you don't know what we're doing. But this is one of my favorite defense calls on El Haloof. Now, El Haloof if you don't play competitive is one of the most difficult maps to attack period and and it's up there with a couple other ones but it's well renowned for being the campy map so what normally happens is is if you can follow my mouse here if you look at the mini map there used to be a push up this side however with the introduction of the new arty strike that's no longer possible because you will get absolutely hammered going up there so the other other only real other option is the alpha line coupled with some of these spots up here. Now, one of the great things about this, if we get out of Shadow's view, is you can see we have a mouse here, in addition to a lot of fast heavies, and we also have these two E3s. Now, these tanks work in conjunction. Anything that tries to push that mouse is going to get eaten up by the E3s. Let's go back to Shadow view. Shadow's view here. So, what's the idea of this strat? Now, the idea is, is that we know the enemies have to spread out in all these gaps to get crossfires. So, what we're doing is we're setting up a push-out, you know, so I call it, which means that we wait for the enemies to fan themselves out and not be able to support each other, and they can't support each other, one, because they're in a gully, and two, because of all these rocks, and then we take advantage of that and stretch the battlefield. Right now, if we were to just sit like this, we would lose. Absolutely, we would lose, 10 out of 10 times. However, we don't plan on actually camping. But we don't want the enemy to know that, so we're luring them in to thinking that we're hard camping, and then we're going to push out. Now, the idea is, is the enemies are all low, is we're able to stretch that battlefield out, and then loop around and start hitting them in the side. Now, 60 TP is up. We have an AMXM4 on that corner, who is looking to spot anything down there. So he spots a 60 TP. Now, everybody else is ordered, at least everybody here who's kind of parked, um on this side is ordered to not fire at that 60 TP. Obviously this is not a random battle and you can see that everybody over there is in the same clan and they are on comms so if that 60 TP suddenly bounces you know 13 shells he's gonna know where we all are and he can relay that and they might be able to relay that to the team. Now unfortunately one IS-7 over here gets lit. Now he's a little bit too far back these buildings right out in front of us are protecting us from being spotted and now you can see what I'm talking about we see those s conks pop up those u -deses, and we got a 60 TP rolling around the other side so now I'm just giving final direction and I'm calling it out I can't go first you can see me over there on the far left because I have strikes however sometimes I do tend to end up a little bit too close to the front so now we're going to push out and we know we have an overmatch because I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tanks that are not in the fight. And we have about 60% of our force here. They only have maximum 50%. And that doesn't even, that includes the arty. Shadow's going to get a great high row there on the 277. Now, the 277, anything without gun depression is instructed to go straight for Alpha 2. Now, this is what I call setting the edge. You need to have your edge secure before you start trying to do flanking maneuvers. The chieftains, if we look behind us, the chieftains are occupying all these little gaps. Right in here, we actually have quite a few chieftains going after the 60 TP. And that's to prevent things from shooting the fast heavies in the side. So, now we've stretched it, and that means that we can occupy that. You can see me clicking there at Bravo 2. Now look at this spot here as we zoom in. Um, oh, didn't mean to pause it. Just perfect shots right down to all these vehicles. I'm dropping already, trying to force them to either push through the strike or back down into fire. They're going to have to pick. It looks like the 60 DP decides to drive through it, which is actually probably the better option. Not quite sure what's going on with the silhouettes there. And we're already up 8,500 HP. The E3s are hammering anything that's trying to go after that mouse. We got an IS-7 over there in the corner. You can see me rotating back just to ensure that that mouse is safe. And now we have Shadow, who is going to go and hunt for this 277. Still on full health. Looks like he's actually running 
turbo hardening rammer. Which is a great loadout here. 277 does struggle from some lower health. He's going to find the arty. Doesn't really feel like reloading, and is going to ram it. Can hardly blame him. And now, again, just look at the position that Shadow has here by pushing all the way around. Sometimes people would rather just stay in their position, but Shadow's going to keep looking for it. He's shooting from the enemy cap down onto the enemy who are across the field. If you just had this screenshot, you would have no idea how this happened. Look at this. Tank's backing up. Unfortunately, unlucky shot there. I'm going to activate the Inspire. And now we're just rolling around on the backside. This is usually the part of the fight that you don't see, which is the tanks wrapping all the way around. 277 up. And as this battle comes to a close, I'm going to just speed it up a little bit as Shadow finishes off this 277 with Jafter. Just two tanks remaining. One of which is going to kill me here at one point. And a violent finish. Absolutely fantastic. The enemy was full strength. And so were we. So it's quite an even battle. We finished with a 15, or sorry, 19,000. Um hit point differential. Let's take a look at the post game. So here, I mean obviously he's not going to get any battle rewards or anything like that. But he is going to finish top of our team with 4868 damage, 1100 XP. Advances are a fantastic way to train your crews. When you're all communicating, you can see everybody here is finishing with 900 XP. The only person who didn't was Tanker who I believe was actually leading the push and therefore he took the brunt of, uh, yeah, six hits received, six pens. Quite unfortunate there for being in an IS-7. Unfortunately, we were not running battle payments for some reason, which we should have been. So he's going to finish with a meager 536 credits. Again, with the amount of premium he fired and the amount of premium consumables he had, it, uh, it's actually quite nice that he did come out on top without that booster. And again, with that times two, because you do get those times twos, um, and the premium account, he did get 3,000 XP total. So fantastic result there. I do have the battle comms version of this. So if you want to watch that, I will upload that later. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.